we have up there is we have one line and we have two line segments. Why do I call this a line and a line segment? Well, this line, uh, lines make sure continue indefinitely. This goes indefinitely in this direction and indefinitely in this direction. These two are line segments because they stop. So to help us make this problem, I am going to make them both lines. Now the next thing that we, uh, for this problem that we need to make sure that we know is that we want to make sure they're parallel. Because when they're parallel, we have a lot of different possibilities we can look at. We can look at um, if they're corresponding angles, if we have alternate interior angles. Um, and there's a lot of different other things that we can, same side interior. A lot of things now happen when we're given parallel lines. So right now I don't have parallel lines, but when you're looking at a book or looking at a problem, you're gonna wanna make sure that you see, you know, like double arrows sometimes we show, that there, that means that these are going to indefinitely continue in both directions without touching each other. Um, and then this line that's crossing is what we call transversal. And all it is is another line segment that whenever a line segment intersects parallel lines, we're given a transversal. Now, thankfully for transversals, thankfully they came into our lives because what transversals now do for us is they allow us to use alternate interior angles and corresponding angles. And there's a couple other ones, but we'll just keep it simple for right now. Um, <clears throat> so we can do this kind of two different ways. First way is you should remember vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are opposite Bush, of each other. Right is out front. Mia Bush, your right is in front of the school. So let's say I just make it easier right here. I know that 104, that these two angles are equal to each other because they're what we call vertical angles. Opposite angles, right? Vertical angles. Then, now since I have corresponding angles and I have a transversal, these two angles are what we call corresponding angles. They're on the same side of the parallel lines and they're also on the same side of the transversal. So corresponding angles are equal to each other. So I could write 104 is equal to x minus 10. All right, so that's one way you can look at it. Other way we can look at it, oh shoot, that's x minus 10 is you could also say, well, these two angles are, are vertical angles, right? And since these two angles are vertical angles, now I have corresponding angles on the other side of the transversal. These two are also corresponding angles. So again, I could write the same equation. So it really doesn't matter which way you want to use corresponding angles for this problem. Um, but when you do that, what you have is now I can solve my problem. So 104 equals x minus 10, add a 10 onto both sides, and I get 114 equals x. So that's how you use it with corresponding angles. What if I wanted to use this with alternate interior angles? And I can't use it with alternate interior angles because I don't have any interior angles. Uh, yeah, so we'll just leave it like that for right now. There is a way you could, you could actually say that since this is vertical, that's 104. Since those are vertical, that's x minus 10. Now what I have is two interior angles that alternate above and below my transversal, so therefore they're alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are also equal to each other. So that's just another way that you guys can uh, use alternate interior angles to solve for that problem.